So how does that sound? Recording we in are. progress, so. We are live across the internets, yep. global, galactical. Yep. Hey, everybody, yeah. you're on Lunch Conversations with Randy and Teddy. I'm Teddy, for those who don't know, and the other guy here in the bright pink shirt is my cohort, uh, Randy Wooden. Of the uh, and um, and this is uh, every new every Wednesday at 11 55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we show up uh, and we encourage you to join us. And if you got Chick fil A and you want to send, send it to me, I'm happy to have you do that, Kurt. Um, so for those who don't know me, I'm Teddy Burris, I'm a LinkedIn strategist, I'm a Google Workspace consultant. For those who have never heard me use those words, it's a okay. new part of the business, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, and so um, I'm going to let my good buddy introduce himself. Then I'll introduce our special guest. Yeah, Randy Wooden with Goodwill Industries of Northwest North Carolina. And I run our professional center out of Winston-Salem. And today it's out of the man cave, Teddy. Yeah. The east wing of the man cave. Uh, here it is another Wednesday. And the last, what, two more of the of the month until we turn the Turn the calendar. Hey, who's look, if using, you're a job hunter. Who's using the west yeah. wing? I mean, what's going on in the west wing? Are you not allowed to be in there today? Well, I could tell you, but it's top secret and um, okay. Okay. she'll be revealed at a, at a later okay. time. But uh, yeah, I run our professional center. So if you or maybe somebody, you know, regardless of where they may live, but ideally, certainly locally here in the triad. But if you know folks who are professionals that might be in a job search or thinking about it, uh, have them come my way. Uh, you reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to try to help you. All services are free. And I always tell people, Teddy, yeah. you get what you pay for. But um, I digress. But fortunately, I digress. You, have a, you have a strong support system and helps make it more valuable. Yeah, we do. I mean, Goodwill, everybody's heard of Goodwill. And you know, everybody thinks retail stores and donations. And yeah, we do that. But what do we do with the money? What we do with the money is we push that back into what's called workforce development, whether it's skills training, helping a guy with a, you know, learning a trade or whatever, or helping him with a job hunt. And that's the piece that I fit in uh, is the job search. And my demographic are typically people that might be on this call today, professionals. So there you go. Teddy, we're going to have a great show today. And I've got some questions for uh, Oscar as well, but why don't you tee it up and then uh, I'll throw the old why question at him. How's that yeah, sound? Yeah. And um, um, hey, before I introduce our special guest, you want to yeah. do the housekeeping? We've been a little lax about the housekeeping. Dude. Yeah, sure. Um, because I, I don't multitask very well. Please stay out of the Q&A. Just stay to the chat because that's enough for me. And, and I'll keep an eye on that. When we see things that are good questions or comments, we'll try to work those in. Oscar is our guest today, and uh, I think we all know introverts. Yeah. We yeah. may be one ourselves, and there's some challenges inherent with that and some some obstacles, and I think tips and encouragement could be very useful, and so I'm excited Oscar is our guest today. But yeah, if you have those comments, questions, let us know where you're uh, watching us from, and also if you're so inclined, let us know what's on the lunch menu today, and uh, let's get this thing started. Teddy, we've got a lot of turf to cover. So um, I, I got introduced to Oscar Garcia, our special guest. Uh, I don't know, maybe three or four months ago. Uh, he, he's typically on the West Coast. And for those that don't know, that's to the right of me. You know, not the left, it's to the right of me. And uh, and so, but today Oscar's, you know, south of me. And we'll, I'll let him tell us where he is. But Oscar's an introvert. He, he maybe feels like an introvert, but I think he's found ways to overcome that. Uh, he's a speaker. He's a trainer. He has a business where he is a, the chief empowerment officer. We talked about that. It's a pretty powerful way mm -hmm. to act, act, walk, and talk in life and uh, has his own consulting firm. Oscar, do, do yourself a favor. Introduce yourself to the audience way better than I can. Uh, thank you, Teddy and Randy. Thank you. I, I really feel your energy. I know we're going to have a great time here. Um, so again, thank you so much for having me as a guest and, uh, hello everyone. So yes, um, you know, as you said, my natural personality is an introvert. I have, uh, six years ago, I launched a training and consulting company called Aspita Consulting. And on the consulting side, we focus on, um, community relations, workforce development on the training. We do what I refer to as culturally relevant career development and leadership training. And, um, you know, I, uh, I used to work in the tech industry 12 years uh, for various startups, co-founded a nonprofit that was totally volunteer based with family and friends, um, mm -hmm. became the chamber uh, of commerce CEO for almost seven years. 
and then left there and did a one-year consulting uh, gig at LinkedIn before I launched at Speedit Consulting. I got to ask you a question uh, right off the bat here. And I ask this of every guest every week. So you're not going to get away without uh, getting asked the why <laughs> question. I'm always curious. And I think the why reveals a lot uh, about a lot of things, a lot of situations. But I always ask people, I can tell you're passionate about what you do. Was there a point or a series of incidents that, that, that kind of pointed you down the path that you're on now? It's all the crap that I've been through, Randy. <laughs> I, I, this is what I, this is what I say. Yeah, I yeah. say we all go through crap in my crap stinks, but it's also fertilizer. That's what manure is. How we react to the challenges in life, it is our choice. And so, so ever since I was a kid, I mean, English is my second language. Okay, I'm a first generation uh, professional, only one out of ten siblings that went off to college. So a lot of obstacles that I've had to overcome, the shyness, the, ever since I was, again, a, a kid, my mom used to tell people, Oscar's just like his uncle Robert, shy and reserved. And you wear those labels, right? Because that's what you, know, you get identified. And as I, you know, in, in high school and college and, and into the workforce, everything, I was new at everything, trying to figure things out. But one of the things too about me is, is that, um, I'm negatively motivated mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm also not a quitter as well. And so I started to figure out, cause as an introvert, those of you that are watching, listening later, uh, the introverts, you know that we don't like to initiate conversations, much less interviewing, filling out a resume, cover letter. Like I hate panhandling for an opportunity, but mm -hmm. you got to put food on the table. And so when I did it, yep. To use Silicon Valley terms, I reverse engineered how to attract opportunities and learn how to market myself so that opportunities come to me. Yeah, that's that's good. Randy, were, go ahead. Yeah, were were you shy because of the language barrier and the culture barrier? Was that was that you, you, know, you told, know what, hey, just because you were intimidated by the language and I, English I, and, I, and such? Those? Yeah, that's a great question, Randy. You know, yeah. I think it was a, com a combination of things. Um, okay. Yes, that, that was part of it when, you know, you uh, are, um, you know, you have a different culture, you speak a different language when, you know, people used to make fun of me because of how I pronounce certain words. Like mm -hmm. uh, in the Bay Area, there's a thing called, called Marine World. I used to pronounce it Maringuas and people were like, oh, well, that's so funny. Say it again, Oscar, you know, and I would say, mm -hmm. right, and you know, you know how we are as kids. I mean, I made fun of kids too and stuff like that. And, and so all those things, right, just end up um, getting sort of placed on top of one another and yourself. And it can either break you or it can reshape you and be like, you know what? Let's figure this stuff out and let's move forward in a positive direction. Let's talk oh, very about cool. that. Very cool. Because yeah. that's, that's, that's right up the alley of where we're taking this conversation, Oscar. Um, you know, and, and, not everybody can be like Randy and I. I mean, we'll walk down the street and stop and hug a stranger, you know. And you know, you know, of course, Randy's learned how to, you know, uh, pick pockets. But I've taught him to be better than that. But you know, uh, <laughs> sorry, I forgot that. So look, how do how do people who are not like us, you know, the introvert part of the, our friends and our network, and you know, how do they, you know, how do they take and get their mind focused on? finding that conversation to find that job or how does that introvert just get into that mindset of working towards starting a business what do you what are your thoughts that's a great question um and first of all here's the thing if we break down um forget right now the label introvert extrovert let's just look at the way we as human beings are programmed and what we like we all want to feel heard we all want to feel listened and no one wants to be, feel like someone's talking over you, right? And so, so what, we, what we need to do, and again, this is something that I've learned, right? I've done a lot of self-reflection and gone back and so forth, is, is that we need to take the, 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 the positive, the strong skills from whether you're an introvert or an extrovert and bring those. It's like, man, I know you love baseball, buddy. It's, it's like we cannot win, a, a, a team cannot win a world, can't win a game, let alone the World Series, 
with nine pitchers only. You need a player to play each position to the best of their ability. Okay. And so we need to take the best of these skills, right? That each personality has develop those and learn how to, based on the circumstance situation, adapt to it. Sometimes you're going to sit back and you're going to listen. Sometimes you're going to be the Randy, the petties of the world, and you're going to be leading this conversation and ask OG over here, Oscar Garcia is going to need to shut up and listen and wait for the next question. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's powerful. Yeah. I, I get it. You know, yeah. Uh, be in the be in the space, be in the environment, and be in the mode you should be in that environment. Uh, yes. That's good stuff. Can I write that down and use that later? Do it, my friend. Thank you, OG. <laughs> we're, we're we're in the philanthropy business here, so uh, you know what's that phrase? Uh, sharing uh, is caring, or whatever the the, the slogan is. <laughs> uh -huh. A good friend of mine years ago, he's a Dale Carnegie coach. Years ago, I said something really, I don't know where it came from. I said something pretty profound. And he says, oh, my golly. He says, do you mind if I use that? And he says, and here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to I'm going to say th three times when I use it, I'm going to say, as Teddy Burris told me, as Teddy Burris told me, as Teddy Burris told me. He said, the fourth time I'll use it, he'll say, as I've always said. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, oh, Randy, uh, uh, Oscar, here's another thought. So we're, 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 we're in this space of trying to find a job or trying to be successful in business or a career. And we often find ourselves in conversations and often, and you've heard this, and I know Randy has as well, that you should strive to not always be the most uh, intelligent or the smartest person in the room. Yeah, you should really be in situations where you're not the smartest person in the room. That's how we grow. Yeah, how we learn. Yes. So what? What? Let's 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 draw this scenario where you know that I show up. I'm in this space, and I'm the smartest dude in the room. Now, Randy, I know what you're going to say. It never happened. <laughs> And he's all like, I have yet to see that happen. You're the blind squirrel, <laughs> Teddy. Is, it, is, it, is this the blind squirrel story? <laughs> so let's say I, heard, I already up, heard that story before. <laughs> let's say we show up in a space, you know, either networking or coffee yeah, meeting yeah. or maybe even an interview. And we feel like we're the smartest person in the room. What do we do? Well, so... I've heard this so many times, uh, Teddy, right? That if you're the smartest person in the room, we're in the wrong room. And I, I, I get where that is coming from because we, yep. yes, we always should be challenging ourselves to surround ourselves with people that are greater than us, that have accomplished more because, you know, they pull us. But there's, but, but it's not a period at that sentence. There is a semicolon or whatever the heck, comma, whatever the heck we want to call it in that, if we are, do find ourselves also the smartest person in the room, then maybe it's God's way of telling us that we need to help and mentor those that are in that room. Because, see, here's the thing. If, if, if I'm the dumbest person, I've been the dumbest person probably 99.9% .9 of the time that I walked into that damn room. Thank God that the people didn't leave because they became my mentors. They became my sixth great sixth grade teacher who who nudged me and said oscar don't forget to get your mom and dad to sign that form that, that says you can go into the next math class and if it wouldn't have in, in middle school and if it wouldn't have been for mr jones there is tracking that happens in school who knows if i would have sure. stayed on track to go into a four-year university yeah yeah, that's you know, my thinking, point. Yeah, thinking back, I remember uh, when I, I joined our uh, fraternity in college, I was this the second lowest in seniority out of about 80 uh, brothers. And I'd always been the youngest, uh, given my birthday at the end of September for that school year. I was always among the youngest, uh, often among this, the smallest, too, uh, for that matter, height, weight wise, because yeah. uh, I was the youngest. And I remember... Um, thinking, okay, I joined the frat and I'm just going to kind of sink in here and just, yeah, whatever. And I remember one or two of the senior uh, people who were seniors and, and some of the leaders in the fraternity set me aside and said, Randy, we see something in you. And we would like for you to consider being our running for vice president um, at the next election in our fraternity. 
And these were guys that I looked up to, not in awe of, but, but I don't know that I would have taken that step to, and by the way, that job was public relations. So it was a perfect job for me. It was helping promote the frat across campus and across the community. But I'll always remember that, that here was people that I looked up to and respected and who took me aside and said, I believe in you. I trust you. I think this would be great for you. And if it weren't for them, um, I don't know that I would have kind of stuck it out there because I don't know that I belonged at that point. I didn't know that I measured up. Yeah. And so sometimes it takes an, which, whether it's a teacher, a spouse, a friend, a, a mentor at work, or somebody who says, Oscar, I see something in you. You can get this thing done. Let's work on this and make it happen. So I, it's yes. a time I'll always remember many, many years ago. Absolutely. Was that Kappa Kappa red, white, and blue or Kappa Kappa rolling rock? <laughs> It was, it was Lambda Chi Alpha, Kappa <laughs> Alpha Zeta, KA 1001, I'll have you know. That was oh. me. Um, but that was uh, a long, long time ago. Many, no, many beers ago. I'm yeah. with you. And, yeah, yeah. And, you know, Oscar, I'm with you in this in this model that, you know, you, you got to know the environment you're in. You got to know the space you're in. You know, is mm-hmm. my space to listen or is my space to share? Yeah. And my, is my space to poke people and make them think and challenge them and help them grow even in a, yeah. in a uh, you know a coffee shop or a bar stool conversation when you know yeah. where you stand then you engage the way you should engage and that's a great great thing especially when my whole business model is based on that you know it all starts with yes. conversation i can either start the conversation lead the conversation or actively listen in the conversation yes yes so, hey, let's look at, hey, by the way, I'll uh, use the chat, folks, and, and, and bombard Randy, because Randy needs something to do with, with uh, more at conversations in the <laughs> chat. You know, have you ever been in a situation where you were the smartest person in the room, and did you, and listen to this question, did you understand your role? Uh, that, that, you know, that, that's the way I would look at it. So, yeah, Great anybody, question. you know, share that, and uh, yeah. we'd love to hear from you. Were you the smartest person in the room and did you understand your role? Hey, let's, while we're letting them share that, let's, let's talk about this, Oscar. So you alluded to this earlier. You said, you know, um, uh, I can't remember the exact words you said. I'll have to go back to the videotape and remind myself. But you basically said, you know, uh, when, we're, when we get hurt and we get painful and we get, you know, challenge, hardship, hardship has a huge impact on our lives. And, um, and we can look at hardship as problematic or painful, or we can look at it in another way. Maybe it's a blessing. So talk about that a little bit more. Maybe if you don't mind, maybe share a hardship that you have, another hardship perspective of how it helped you grow. Yeah. Well, yeah, see, you're right. I mean, first of all, none of us want to go through hardships. I mean, it's, it's horrible. Uh, all right. It's a lot of pain and just emotional and, Sure. you know, many, many other uh, uh, aspects of it. But um, I mean, I mean, I'll tell you, I mean, for me, personally, I don't want to go back to I'm, I'm about to be 53 in March, okay, I don't want to go back to relive my 40s. I went through some really tough times. I went through a divorce. My daughter attempted suicide twice. I got into some relationships that quite frankly, I was not ready for and made some bad choices hurt some people and, you know, and financially, upside down when you go through a divorce, right? I mean, it's not like you walk away a millionaire, okay? <laughs> I <laughs> lost hear you. My, yeah, I lost my parents uh, within yep. uh, first my dad and then my mom within four months of each other. Mm. So I went through a lot. And yeah. I used to be of the, of the attitude of the mindset of, God, don't give me a lighter load, give me a stronger back to handle these challenges. And Here's again, again, everything has, right, like a cause and effect. The flip side of that, though, is is that because of also my upbringing and being first generation professional and being my parents, just always playing that lead role in the family, almost kind of like the parent role to my parents, Mm -hmm. that I didn't learn how to humble myself and ask for help or accept help. And so I can't do, I, basically God gave me so much that he said, you know what, I'm going to break you until you come to me and you start going to other people to ask me for help. Mm. So 
those are some of the hardships, you know, that I've gone through and some of the lessons that I've learned. Don't be so prideful, folks, that you don't step back and ask for help, whether it's looking for another job or whatever. You know, maybe you've been working in it for 40 years and you got laid off, you know, industry yeah. changed. Humble yourself. It's okay to ask for help. Does does being an introvert make that any more difficult to to reach out versus being an extrovert? In your well, view? yeah, you know, I I think it does because as as an introvert too is is that um, we I mean in general we speak to ourselves the most, but somehow you know our, our, as an introvert, I think generally speaking, our best friend is ourselves, our shadow. <laughs> And so, and so going back to that earlier, you know, talk that we were having or question about, you know, if you're the smartest person, you know, it's like, if you're only talking to yourself, you, you know what the advice is going to get, uh, you're going to get, which is what got you in that situation. So, yeah. so yes, it does, I think, compound that. And th which is why I say, like, get out of that and reach out. Listen, even folks, even if you're just watching and participating on a weekly basis uh, on Teddy and Randy's show, that, believe it or not, is a step in the right direction because your subconscious mind and your conscious mind is listening and taking in this positive information from these guests and, and these two funny characters here. Pearls of wisdom, we prefer to call them, Oscar. So yeah, there we go. Pearls of wisdom. Pearl, <laughs> pearls of, hey, I got to ask you a quick question here. You mentioned that you were negatively motivated. And so uh, years ago, somebody had told me, and I guess I need to say it now. I say it all the time because I used to say who told me that. Um, anyway, but that you're motivated either by a fear of loss yeah. or an expectation of gain but that the fear of loss is a greater motivator. And is that what you mean by being negatively motivated, a fear of loss, of, of being shown as not uh, measuring up or did, where, where's, what's that negatively motivated me? It, 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 to me, to me, Randy, what that means negatively motivated is when someone doesn't believe that I have the ability, the potential to do something. And, um, and I think part of that comes to where my personality is. I'm, I, I love encouraging people. Yeah. If you go onto my LinkedIn or, you know, social media, you'll see that I'm very positive, uplifting people. And so um, one of my favorite authors uh, on leadership is John Maxwell. And he talks about how he sees people with the number 10 being top and versus a zero, you got to work your way up and prove yourself that you are worthy. And, and that's how I look at people as well. And so when someone, I, and, I, and, and I have that expectation too, that people are going to look at me positive and be like, yeah, encouraging. But when the opposite happens, I'm like, you know what? Game on. Just watch. Just watch here. You know, you can't hear. Okay. But I just cracked my knuckles. Okay. Cause you know, we're getting ready to hear a rumble here. Okay. So that's what I mean by being uh, negatively uh, motivated. Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you, uh, that's, that's positive, that's powerful, this negative motivation versus positive motivation. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, a, a good friend of mine recently got divorced. And uh, so she's, you know, a single mom with two young kids. And, um, and, and she, she's not real sure about her future. And you could tell that in the way she speaks and the way she acts. Yeah. But um, so, and I, I, my wife are, you know, involved in her life a little bit and trying to encourage her and motivate her. And, and, and we're saying to her, your future is as positive as you want it to be. Just keep working on it. Keep doing the things that you know you need to do. And, you know, she's starting this new business and, you know, she's helping her, her child, you know, overcome uh, what it's called ADHD, ABC stuff and be better in school. And, and we're, we're, we're rooting her along along the way we're encouraging and we're celebrating every little milestone of improvement and you can see in her face you can see in the way she dresses you can see in the way she talks that she yeah. is truly believing in herself more than she ever was yeah. and it is making a huge impact versus if yeah. if those of us who are charged because we show up in the space those of us who are charged with motivating don't or we discourage or ignore then yeah. what did we just do we failed miserably as as humans so yeah. i'm with you man uh, thanks for that conversation it really made me hey, think. you, you I, know randy go ahead 
Well, I just, I was going to throw this in here. I, uh, Clifton strengths. So I, I took the assessment. My number one strength is positivity. So in, uh, call me Pollyanna and then I'll punch you in the nose, but, but it, it's not positively, it's not <laughs> positively punch you in the nose, buddy. I'll tell you. Uh, but in, in Teddy's example, if, if, if he had just commiserated with that person goes, Oh yeah, you know, life sucks. And, you know, I get it. I get it. I get it. Would that have been more helpful or, or sometimes the audience, the receiver, uh, and this is a, a stereotypical men versus women, men want to fix stuff. So Teddy comes in and says, you know, cheer up, you, you know, do this, do that, do this. And sometimes people, women, perhaps in particular, they want to be heard. Yeah. Yep. And, and they want to have their, their fears uh, affirmed that, you know, versus, oh, just get over it. You know, you lose a child. Ah, well, you know, in time, you'll get over it. Well, yeah. maybe not. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to process that in the way I darn well feel like it. Um, and so I wonder, it's, is there a way to kind of gauge the audience to see, do you need to be Mr. Fix-It and encourager or, or both, or more of the commiserating? And, and is there a point at which too much commiserating is, is, is detrimental? Uh, I, so, Randy, I, to, to your question, uh, again, I think either extreme is is no bueno, okay? Uh, either extreme. But uh, you reminded yeah. me of another book that I have read, um, very powerful. It talks about uh, what you're talking about, and that is, uh, the title of the book is Nonviolent Communication. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter, men or women, and, but it, it's a book that helps us really understand the feelings of other people, the intentions. Like for example, when someone is very angry and yelling at you, it could be that they just got into an argument. And like I used to work, my very first job out of college was in retail management. And it could have well that they got into an argument with their spouse and they come to the store yeah. and they can't find the item that they're looking for. And so who do they take it out, right? It's kind of like that old saying that uh, don't kick the dog, right? Cause with the, I mean, that's where the, you know that sort of that comes from, and so to my point though is that um, I think it is important that we acknowledge people's feelings, how they're feeling, because there is pain. Um, one of the things that I encourage um, job seekers when they lose their job, I tell them, I said, listen, wait, don't just jump on LinkedIn or or hire a resume writer right off the bat. I said, go to the emotional gym. Go to the emotional gym because it stings, it hurts, it's a hit in our self-image. Oftentimes we tie our identity to that uh, to that job. And so we need to take a, some time to acknowledge how we're feeling, right? What happened, but don't wallow. Yeah. Don't be hanging out there for months, you know, 18 months go by and you're still haven't gotten over it. Like, okay, so again it's being in tune acknowledging our feelings and going to that emotional gym yeah, yeah teddy i'm going to throw in a, a comment that we see in the chat and then you, you can do our, our bottom of the hour break but uh, uh cindy had mentioned something that works well for her in conversation and, and cindy is top top of the line in terms of communication skills and professionalism and etiquette she's the one i was we were kicking around earlier about you know i stayed up all night st studying eth <laughs> professionalism I'm a, a piece of work in progress, but uh, she says, uh, as an example, to say something like this, I can see how you may feel about that. Have you thought about, yeah. and then, and then throwing out there. So uh, yeah. with that, Teddy, let's throw it to you for there's our, a, there's another, there's break. another old adage. It's really a mm -hmm. sarcastic way of doing that. It's called feel felt found. I understand how you may feel. Um, I have, uh, others have felt this way. Um, I have found X, Y, Z. Now that's a, a, a really old school way of doing and asking what Cindy just asked was, have you thought about it this way without all that, you know, other baggage yeah. stuff? Um, but, uh, yeah. anyway, Hey, it's 1130. Uh, you're on lunch conversations with Randy and Teddy. For those who don't know, I'm Randy and the guy in the pink shirt is Rand. Uh, I'm Teddy and the guy in the pink shirt is Randy. <laughs> Teddy, uh, it's 1230. Eastern time. It's 1230. It's yeah. Okay. So, so anyway, our special guest today is Randy. Gar I told you I was going to try to do this better, Randy. <laughs> He's got his mind on Finnegan's Randy. wake. Yeah. And Oscar Garcia. Oscar is an introvert turned international speaker. Uh, 
Um, the conversations today is about, you know, how do, how do we move forward as introverts? How do we overcome? How do we achieve? I don't yeah. care if it's, in, it, it's irrelevant, whether it's business, career, or family, or community. Uh, we should all be looking at how we can do this better and how we can feel better uh, ourselves in this journey. Um, so lunch with Randy and Teddy is uh, uh, every, every week, 11.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesdays. We are uh, actively seeking sponsors to help us grow this show for you. So if you know somebody that would be a good partner in helping us grow the show, you know how to get a hold of Randy or you know how to get a hold of me. So that's my yeah. uh, that's our half hour break. So Oscar, man, this is good good dialogue. Really good stuff. I appreciate it because you're really making me think as well. And I, I appreciate that. Uh, and I'm not breaking out in a sweat, but I think either. So that means that it, you know, <laughs> you know hardships. I'll tell you, I, I remember uh, one of my, one of my greatest blessings. Let's take away the hardship. Let's talk about blessings. For me personally, one of my greatest blessings was when my four uh, preteen daughters, probably eight, nine, and 10 years old, told my wife, their mama, that they did not like me. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I was in a space I was I was doing work that was overly stressful I was away from home all the time traveling all over the country yeah and I remember those I, I would come home and I would try to be dad and I needed to really be friend I really mm -hmm. needed to do bonding and rapport and not be dad and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll never forget those words that they said it stung back then I was like well, what do you mean you don't like me but then when I realized what those words were and where they were coming from, uh, it, it really got me to change my life. I quit that job I was doing and I, you know, became more of a, you know, in-person dad rather than just a paycheck dad. So mm -hmm. that was probably one of my biggest blessings ever. Um, mm -hmm. Let's, let's talk about something else. Uh, servant leader, servant leader, you know, you, you and I talked a while back and, you know, we talked about this phrase servant leader, and I think you related that as a keynote speaker, speaking to others, you think of yourself as a servant leader because you have a purpose. You have a purpose there. Right. Talk about the role of people in, you know, uh, career search or in business. What is that word servant leader and how does it align with these journeys? Yeah, great, great question. So first of all, I want to just keep things really simple here. To me, servant leadership is giving unconditionally, no expectations, yeah. okay? no expectations. Um, I, I have a good friend, uh, Hamid, who is also uh, out on the West Coast. And about 18 years ago, he was working for a big tech company, got laid off along with other people. And um, so, you know, he and his, his buddies that had gotten laid off, got together for coffee. And obviously they're going to talk about, you know, passing some job leads, et cetera, and so forth. And uh, many of those uh, friends ended up getting a job. Mm -hmm. Hamid also got a job, but what he also did is he started a job seeker support group that I is still- I knew that name. Yes. That is still going on strong. In fact, I would encourage you to invite him as a guest. Love that man, okay? Great heart. Hamid started this job seekers group, like I said, that is still going on. It is free, okay? He gives up his time unconditionally. To me, that is, he is an example of servant leadership. It is someone who sees a need and with all his energy, just compassionately gives to that need, to that purpose with zero expectation. And see, here's the thing, as a job seeker, I know we're naturally, I mean, first of all, as human beings, we're naturally selfish, okay? We are, okay, all of us. And, and when we are looking for a job, we're even more so, because we're oftentimes in survival mode, like I need a job to pay the bills, feed my family, et cetera, and so forth. And so when I realized that someone like Hamid, despite having his own personal needs, did what he did, I'm like, listen, this dude ought to start a church or something, okay? Because like, I'll, I'll get to his offertory here. That, he is an example of servant leadership. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know, I mean, I'm, um, 
I, I've, I've talked to Hamid. I've, I've done some work for his group, and I, I need to go back and do more. I thank you for reminding me about that. And you're right, I need to invite him to the show. But Oscar, you know, there's another perspective about servant leadership. You can, you, you can be in a space where you have the ability to give way more than if you were in a different space. Now, as a job seeker, we have to be selfish in the context of finding a way to be able to survive th slash thrive. We have to get back into that space. But along this journey of finding that opportunity to get, create that revenue to pay our bills, along that journey, I think that we also have to have this mindset of being a servant leader and being willing to give to others. Because as you said, we have to give with no expectations. And I would wager you've experienced this. I know Randy has, I know I have, and I would wager a lot of the people on the show in the audience have experienced this. When you help someone else somewhere along and with no expectations, somewhere along the way, the freaking doorbell rings, the phone rings, an email comes in mm -hmm. that opens a door for you that you never even saw. Yes. I'm a, I'm a, go ahead. Teddy, uh, I'm with you in what you're saying that as a job seeker, you know, we're in, we have that need. I'm with you and so forth. However, here's the other thing that I challenge job seekers here is we can all at least give a compliment. Oh, every day. How many of you, how many of you job seekers, how many of you that are on this show and been on the show in the past even wrote a LinkedIn recommendation for Teddy or Randy? And no, they did not tell me to say this. I'm just telling you this myself. I'm willing to bet a hundred bucks, there's probably not even like five of you out of that thousand. And so if you're not willing to give right now when you are able to, of course, when you are in need, you're not going to, because what happens is you have not developed the giving attitude. Yeah. Melissa Hughes <laughs> was on our show last week, Randy. Remember when she said? Mm. She, I think, if I remember right, she challenged that too everybody. much neural pruning. I've gone through too much neural pruning. I don't have a clue what she said. Let me help you, big guy. <laughs> Here's what she said. She said she taught. She challenged the audience. Yeah. She said, "Go do something nice. Go smile at somebody mm -hmm. walking down the street, or say hello to somebody." And that's a powerful. That's a that's a style of servant leadership when you just give of your body through your smile and through your happiness. Um, it, it, and, and we don't, we yeah. don't do that enough. Yeah. And I think also to it, it, and part of the rationale for doing that is that it releases endorphins and other stuff in the brain that help, help you. So if you're trying to improve your mental outlook, then that's, it, it ultimately is a selfish thing from the standpoint that, Hey, I, I'm, I can improve myself, yeah. but I tell you what, it just like with exercise or most any habit, once you start doing it often enough, it becomes a habit. It becomes your new normal and your and and how you exist. And and so I, you know, and I'm an example, not to put myself on a pedestal like Archie Bunker used to say, but <laughs> <laughs> any any old timers ever watch uh, All in the Family, you'll you'll get that one. But um, I'm one of these guys when I walk down the Goodwill hallway, I'm going to say, hey, hey, happy Wednesday, happy Tuesday, happy you know whatever. And I've got people now that beat me to it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I may be the only guy in the whole company that does that, but enough people have seen me that they expect that now, um, but they'll beat me to it. And then they'll smile. There's one guy in particular that does that and he'll beat me to it. And I go, ah, like that, but big grins on our faces. And, you know, you can go through life again, poop happens to everybody and how you mm -hmm. let that affect you. And, and how you process that, I, I think is key to um, a number of things, but yeah, job mm -hmm. hunters, just as a uh, just quick aside, if you are in a job search mode and you are getting help from a Teddy Burris or whatever, one thing you can say is, hey, you know what? I'm out there talking to a lot of people and I'm hearing a lot of uh, openings. It may not be a fit for me. Is there somebody, if not you, that I should keep my eyes open for? Because Teddy may have a next door neighbor, or cousin or somebody who is looking. And if you, if I can offer that help, then that makes it not an equal trade, but at least I'm offering something while I'm also asking for advice and tips. Just yeah. a thought. And, and there's no real yeah. measure to the to the 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 quanti qualitative value of that all that give. It's just a give. 
It is, yeah. I mean, a smile can be factorially more valuable to the right person than a twenty dollar bill. Yeah. By the way, Randy, I'll take twenty dollar bills all day long. But, <laughs> but, but think about that. Thank if you. you you catch somebody who's in a bad mood or feeling bad, their dog just died. And I'm being real because these are real pains for some people, you know, yeah. their, their flat tire or on their car, you, you, you smile at that person and wish them a great day or, or make them giggle or feel good. Oh, that can, that's so powerful and we don't do it enough. So uh, great dialogue, great dialogue. So, um, Hey, in the chat box, Anybody have a, a salutation or something they do every day to give the simplest little gift? Somebody besides Randy's, you know, you know, have a great Monday or statements. Anybody have a, something that they do every day just to be a little different, yeah. and a little better? Share that yeah. with us. So, yeah. Oscar, let's talk about something else. Let's, let's end, we'll, we'll end this segment in, you know, your job today, Oscar is to give this audience some meaningful tips beyond what we've already <laughs> given on how to be <laughs> successful in their career. Now you wrote an article or you shared an article on LinkedIn recently that I thought was pretty cool. And I'll, I'll drop the, uh, it was a video. Was that your video? It was uh, you know, massive what? career <clears throat> success. Oh, yes, 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 that is my video. It is your, okay, I'll, I'll share it uh, and for everybody to see, because it was really a, a, a good story. And uh, I got to clean up the link because I think I fat fingered the link. But um, yeah, I'll share that in the chat because it really was pretty powerful. But talk about that article for a few minutes in the context of a, a few tips that people could be using every day to be successful in their career, because it was really powerful. Yeah, so... Here's some here's uh, some tips, uh, folks. Is number one is is that I I believe, and again, I'm coming to you from the perspective of attracting opportunities from an introvert's perspective. Okay, so um, number one is I think it's very important that we lay the foundation, and that is to develop that professional brand. When people think of Teddy, or when people think of Randy and Oscar, what is that image and impression that you want? Uh, others to have of you okay and and teddy can help you out and and creating that professional brand there's many ways uh that you can do that but make sure you do that sometimes people say well you know i don't have time to create my professional brand listen whether you either are active or not it's out there your brand is out there okay it's up there so might as well control it folks okay number two is is that your online uh, presence. Uh, obviously, LinkedIn is the gorilla out in the space. Make sure that you have a full, uh, complete profile that really hot speaks to your skill sets, your experience, or maybe if you're looking to transition into new, a new industry, where you want to go into. Mm -hmm. um, uh, show examples of your work. I, uh, I I joke around, but I'm trying to get my point. How when we were in elementary school, we would have these show and tells. Remember Randy and Teddy? I mean, I don't know about you, but I would bring my yellow Tonka truck and I'd be you know up in front of the class and showing yeah. people my toy and all that. And I didn't just talk about my Tonka trunk. I brought it to school. Okay. And then all of a sudden we become adults, professionals, and we transition to just telling, i.e. a resume, i.e. a cover letter, or i.e. a LinkedIn. And it's like, no, LinkedIn allows you the opportunity to upload examples of your work, video, publications, et cetera, and so forth. Um, the third thing is networking. And I don't like the word networking because as an introvert, that scares me, but I'd rather look at networking more. It's always, always building and nourishing relationships. Mm -hmm. Stop reaching out to people only when you look for a job. That's like my kids. My yeah. son yesterday texted me. Hi, dad. Like, I already knew where that conversation was going. We didn't even finish the conversation. And this morning, guess what? I got the, dad, I need some money. And I, like, stop doing that job secrets to your network. Only reaching out to Teddy Randy when you need a job. Always be building and nourishing relationships. And mm -hmm. then lastly, okay, the last point is share content share your expertise of course everyone on linkedin is going to be saying that they're 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 the best at whatever you're going to say that in your resume but show me the money okay go in there and make and share a post if you are 
want to take some baby steps because you haven't, uh, you're not comfortable yet sharing content, at least like, you know, put that little emoji. And then next step, graduate to making a comment. Oscar, right. what do I say? Yeah, how about just saying, Teddy, thank you very much for that insightful post. And then you finally, your senior year in college and you're drinking upside down margaritas like I did in my fraternity, okay? And you're a pro at it, all right? And now you cr actually create content that is tied to your industry, to your brand, and you share your thoughts. Yeah. You do these things on a regular basis. Of course, when you are in the job seekers mode, you're gonna do some of these more, but when you're not in the job seekers, you're gonna do others more and less of others. And guess what, folks? You're gonna have people, you're gonna attract opportunities. And like mm -hmm. I said, you know, I never want to be panhandling for my next opportunity. Like I wanna be like that, you know, that prom date that the guys are all trying to, the prom queen that the guys are all trying to ask her to go to the prom date, okay? I wanna be the prom king, okay? Get, get, I've been get, hoping get, Teddy would uh, ask me out to the prom for years, but. <laughs> I, he always has he's married so i guess i'm second fiddle there but uh there's a comment <laughs> the comment in the uh, in the chat section here about phrasing and th to use the term thank you thank you it's, it's somewhat reflexive automatic that kind of a thing and and so don prefers to use the word i appreciate what you do love it don yeah love and it. it conveys a deeper sense of of value personal value impact so just a thought sometimes the wording even though the intent may be the same and another thing too, the difference between I appreciate it and I appreciate you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I had uh, uh, one of my well, won't go into detail, but I, I sent an email to someone uh, in the last couple of days, and I said that very thing. I appreciate you, and I got a very, very um, nice response back. Not that I was fishing for that, but I just wanted to show appreciation for the yeah. person and, and some of the things that they had uh, had done. So again, words matter. And yes. my mom was an English teacher, by the way. So I love the language. And I and that's one of the things I, I wondered why I asked you about that, Oscar, early on about the, the hesitancy with the language piece, because if you can't speak the language that is used in you know everyday business, you're going to be kind of hamstrung because you just can't keep up. You just don't know what's being said or you're perceived as not as competent yes. because you don't know the language. And whether it's misspellings, inappropriate uh, grammar, and I don't mean inappropriate, like, you know, no, no, no. I mean, but, yeah. but, but grammar that's incorrect. Yeah. So uh, hats off to anybody who takes the time, especially somebody who, for them, English is a second language. I mean, we struggle with English and we're born here. We're natives and <laughs> it's the language that we have, but I'm appalled at how poor spelling and grammar are among professionals for whom English is their number one language. So when a guy walks in that can speak two, three languages, dude, that's awesome. Yeah. And goodwill needs people who are bilingual. I wish you lived locally because you may know people <laughs> that could do that. Yeah. We need them. But yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it, Oscar. Really do. Thank you. Great conversation. And, yeah. and, and Oscar, thanks for bringing some energy to the table here because Randy and I needed it. Yeah, we're pretty, you know, just mainline. No, no, no. Just mainline. No, 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 just no, just no. getting by. No, no, no. no Teddy, no, Teddy, Randy. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I mean, again, for having well, me. Well, Oscar, here. do me yes. one favor. Yes. Now, so we had all these conversations. We talked about being an introvert. We talked about being the smartest person in the room. We talked about, you know, hardships and uh, biggest blessings. We talked about, you know, servant leadership. And, you know, you, you dropped some tips on being, you know, uh, more successful in your career. Take what you just shared with there and pull two things out of that that really resonated with you that you think would be important for our audience to never forget. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna bring this down to, again, to our audience here, job seekers, okay? And we touched upon this too as well. So folks, here's the thing. The key isn't uh, to learn how to use LinkedIn. The key is to believe in yourself Hmm. So that you have the courage to use the platform because a dog with a note in his mouth can teach you how to use LinkedIn. But unless you and I believe in ourselves, we're not going to have the courage to share content, to use the platform. And that actually goes across the board in anything, whether it's a job. 
So I'd leave you with that. Could you say that again about what kind of dogs can teach LinkedIn so I know my competition is? <laughs> a dog with a note in his mouth can teach you how to use LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I swear. <laughs> you know what, um, Oscar, uh, joking aside, that's rich. I, when you were talking earlier, I wrote down these two words, I believe. Yes. And all along yep. the way, yep. the conversation was tied to, in some way or another, I believe, and then I, I have the courage. This is powerful. Yep. You don't need to have courage to go out and do something totally, totally uh, foreign to what you want to do or what you have done or what you've been comfortable doing, but you do need to have the courage to do a little bit more. Yes. Because 1% yes. growth a day is so powerful yes. uh, in life and in our, in our, our want to achieve goals. So, buddy, thanks a lot, man. I, I appreciate, thanks, I appreciate yeah. you showing up okay. and really poking this. Thank you. Um, hey, Randy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Teddy. Thank you, Randy. I'm going to. Um, oh, you have a one o'clock. I, I do. One. I do have a training that I'm going to do. So, I will be logging off here. So, thank you so much, Randy, Teddy. And to your entire audience, uh, I appreciate you uh, uh, listening here. And uh, I uh, I have new friends here. So thank you to both of you, Randy. And I'll, share, and all... uh, I'll share your LinkedIn yeah. profile for people to follow you. I'll share your website for them to hunt you down. Thank and, you. And we'll talk another day. And uh, thank you again, buddy. Yes. Thank Thanks, you. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, yeah. yeah. So Randy, Randy, yeah. Oscar, just, Oscar just pummeled us with ideas, man, and knowledge. Did you get a story out of that? Of course, of course, it, the whole thing, that whole the fraternity thing that I talked about earlier yeah. today, same thing. Uh, I had probably is the new guy. I, I, I had a degree of confidence, but when somebody who I respected said, I believe in you, that lit the lit the fuse. And I think we all carry some level of self-doubt, regardless of whether we're an introvert, extrovert, whatever. Um, until we see something happen, there's because we're, we're human and we're again managing risk, like we talked about last week with our brain and and risk reward. But I think as I've gotten older, I don't want to say I've you know I've reached the old man stage where I can wear you know black socks and a sandal and big chains and a you know <laughs> a ton of cologne and just not, walk not around on, and, not and, during the show and and not care. I mean, I still care, but I think a lot of that is that that self belief and. And I try to teach that with my LinkedIn folks that, um, you know, don't be afraid of it. You're not going to break it. And so the X's and O's are nice to learn, but understanding why it's important and how to act on there is important. Two other real quick points. One is attitude. Yeah. And how we, he talked early on about, you know, life's a, basically a poop sandwich uh, in many ways. And not only does it stink, but it can also fertilize and can grow. And so how you choose to allow that to impact your psyche, I think is important. Uh, so try to get what you can that's good and learn from things that aren't so good because we've all been through storms in life um, and, and hopefully we learn from those. And one other thing, and I'm going to quote Teddy Burris, and maybe I say it one or two more times that Teddy said this, and then I'm going to leave your name out of it, just so you know. Teddy talks about dig the well before you need water. And, and this was an opportunity for him today, Oscar, to share that. Um, don't wait like his son did. Hey, dad, you know, the only time he hears from his kid is when he needs money or only time I hear from Teddy Burris is when he needs a favor or he needs a job. And uh, after a while, I'm not going to keep taking his phone call, if you know what I mean. So uh, and not that Teddy does that, but point is be proactive. Uh, don't just talk to people when you need a favor. And there you go. Thank you, Dean. I appreciate the comment. Uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it, Teddy. Teddy is at a loss for words. He is he's just... I fixed uh, it. I fixed it. Okay. <laughs> Here's my story, okay? Um, All right. I'm going to play off of Oscar's, um, you know, negative motivation, negative encouragement. Um, sometimes, that's, sometimes that's worth hearing. Sometimes we need to hear that. I'll give you an example. Yep. When I, uh, when I went to start my business, there were people who play in the sandbox that I now dominate who said, 
why do you, why are you getting in this space? You, you're, you're not a, you know, social media strategist. You're not, you, this is not your expertise. And I, and it wasn't, I, I very clearly know it wasn't. When I decided to get into this space, I was not an expert at what I do. I don't believe I'm an expert today, but I've gotten better. So I heard these people, these two yeah. people who I consider friends and still today consider friends. And they said to me, why, why are you getting into the space? This is not your expertise. They basically were challenging me. I took that negative noise and I said to myself, I'm going to prove them wrong. It's one thing to get that negative noise from someone else so that you can take the challenge, but never let that negative noise become your own um, mantra to yourself because that will fail you. You need to believe in what you want to tackle and go do it. Now, I'll tell you, these people that had previously, this has been 12 years ago, said to me, yep. you know, who are you to get in this space? They're now, you know, business associates. They're now peers. And, you know, we engage in conversations uh, 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 together in this whole space of social media strategy and LinkedIn consulting. And I now know that because I truly believed that I am in the space where I need to be. And I, I am, sometimes I satirically say, I dominate. So, and I'm being satirical because I've, I've proven to myself. Yeah. I don't know if I've proven to them, but I have proven to myself that I can. And I know each one of you, if you truly believe, you can prove it to yourself. What do you think, Randy? But, well, yeah, life's a journey. And where we start is not necessarily where we end. And uh, it's something I saw on Facebook, so I know it's true. Can I say that? Yeah, I guess I can. Um, <laughs> I don't, and I know Nito Cobain has said it. Uh, I know others have said it, and I'm paraphrasing, but you know, just because bad stuff happened and all that, that doesn't mean you need to end up over here. Today is a new day, and you can begin to affect change. It can be a starting point. So th the beginning doesn't dictate the end, right? It oh. only speaks to what's happened before, but what happens from here on that is something that uh, can change and and you're the change person to make that happen so we have a great guest coming up next wednesday teddy i don't know that you're going to be here we have a super oh, secret special I, we, guest yeah we didn't talk about that man oh that's shoot. what we're going to talk about right now i mean how's that I go ahead and admit that i'm not working next week uh, you know we gave him time off for good behavior so teddy's teddy's going to be uh at a super secret location doing super secret stuff with super secret people. And if he wants to share it with the world, then that's, that's up to Teddy, but uh, we'll miss you, Teddy. I'll, We're going to have I'll share it when I get back. There you go. Karen Sigmund Smith with a legacy. Well, Q, she'll be our co-host next week. She was actually a guest several weeks back. And by the way, she's watching us right now, Randy. Oh, well, yeah, good. Then that's, that's the, excellent. In the audience, dude, I only she's monitor there, the chat box. I don't they're waving do. from the, from the nosebleed okay. section, <laughs> but our guest will be Dr. Will Lewis. I uh, know Teddy, you know, Will, and you've known him for years. I've only known him uh, the last year or two. He's done some presentations at our SHRM uh, HR <clears throat> organization. He's, he's presented a couple of times. He's uh, uh, ex-military spent many years in the diversity, equity, inclusion space. And I say it before DEI was cool. OK, he was it's like I was country before country was cool kind of thing. Well, th this guy's been um, knee deep in this stuff for for many years. And he's going to talk about 10 trends that he's seeing in the DEI space. And again, since the, the George Floyd murder, then, you know, this has picked up a lot of steam and momentum. Has that died off now that it's been over a year? And what is going on in the business community? So he, he's a speaker, lecturer. He's got his own uh, organization where they do that training. And he's also got a new book coming out. So we're going to talk about that too. But a very timely topic. If, if you are a, um, a person involved in business, understanding the DEI uh, space and, and how your organization can uh, walk the talk. Mm -hmm. And if you're a job hunter, what are some things that you can look for during that interview process to know whether a company may be walking their talk or I not. Like what are some questions you can ask? Yeah. When you and him put this conversation together, yeah. that it was, um, you know, uh, that DEI is a big piece of it, but also the ability to have difficult conversations. Yep. Which by the way, Randy, 
make sure you come to HR later this afternoon because people struggle with that. <laughs> people struggle with difficult conversations. And so sure. this will help us in, in all kinds yeah. of spaces to be able to. Yeah, it doesn't have to be about race and, and equity includes. It doesn't have to be that. I mean, you can have difficult conversations every day about work performance yeah. uh, on the job or also with your family. And so understanding how to structure conversation can be helpful apart from the, the race issue. So good deal, Teddy. Uh, I think we're done. Are we done yeah, for the day? 11.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Kurt, thanks for being here. Thank you, and Kurt. we'll see everybody again next Wednesday. Take Have care, a good buddy. Day. See you guys. Bye.